Hey guys, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will try to be familiar with the tools and the features, most of the tools and the features that Android Studio offers. It's very important to get to, to, to get familiar with the tools before we start using them. So we're going to first start with the files and directories. An Android application project has a couple of different files. For example, folders and files of our source code modules, resources, and for example, build configurations. We'll first start explore them and get to know most of these files. So let's first start with the first directory under app. We have manifest directory, which by default contains a single file, Android manifest XML file. Within this file, we define or Android defines by default, the metadata or information about our app. So for example, here you can see the package name of our app can also have the app name or the label of the app. We also have the icon and the round icon of our launcher. Additionally, we have the theme of our app. And here also you can define your permissions that your app needs and all the Android components. So for example, activity here is part of the Android component or is part of the four Android application components that we are going to discuss in this series. So if you, for example, see the name here points to the main activity. If you press control and left click, it will take you to the main activity file that we have seen in the previous video. Now let's move to the second directory, which is Java. Under Java, we have three packages or three files. The first or the last two are not very relevant for us now. We Now we just use them to write our uh, test for our application. The first one is very important though. So within the first one here, we have the classes and all the logic of our app. So we can have the provide our classes. We have the Android components. We have can process our data and all the things happen within the first package here. So as you can see here, we only have, have one class, which is the main activity, which is by default generated by Android Studio. And within this class, as you can see, we have uh, an activity that extends app combat activity, and it has one function here, which is the onCreate. And the onCreate here act as the entry point of our application. So in Kotlin, we had a main function. In Android, we have the main activity, which has the onCreate, and the onCreate acts as the entry point. We could also make a couple of more activities and screens, and all of them should have the onCreate overridden, just like this activity right here. You could also see we call the super.onCreate, which we call it from the parent class, which is in this case, the app combat activity. And then we have a single function within this class here, set content view, which points to the main activity. So if you press control and left click again, it will take you to the layout or the UI screen attached to that class. We'll not talk a lot about main activity in this video. We'll save it to the next video. Anyway, let's just move to the other directories, which is the resource here. So this is one, this one is generated by Java, which is just contains uh, under, under study, generates a couple of classes and modules just to set up our application. So anyway, let's just move to the rest or the resources. So here under rest, we have multiple directories. Let's start with the first one. The first one is called drawable. And within the drawable directory, you could store multiple files like images files, JPEG, PNG, SVG, or for example, vector files and XML files. Probably anything that can be drawn on screen. So whenever you want to display an image, you should store this image in the drawable folder and you will have an access to that image in your code. Now let's move to the layout. So under layout here, this is the place where you store all your UI related screen like UI widgets, lists, anything that has connection with the UI. So for example, here you can, you can see we have the main activity layout, which is just attached to our main activity class. And you can see we have a simple text centered to the center of the screen or the center of this canvas. So whenever you have an, a UI screen or anything that's related to the UI screen, you can store it in the layout directory. And you can also see within the main activity class in this function call, we have a reference to that layout. 
And the way we get access to that, the, to that layout is by using R, which is a uh, short for resource or the class which is responsible for all the resources. And then the layout, which is the uh, directory name. And then the name of the layout, which is activity main in this case. And if, and if you press control and left click on it, it will take you to the file or to the layout file. Now let's move to other directories. We have the mipmap directory. And within the mipmap here, we can save a single file or a single image file with multiple resolutions. So for instance, you can see we have multiple resolutions for this image. And finally, we have the XML file that represents that image. And we can use this file just to save, as, as I have said, different resolutions for an image. And we can use it to, for example, uh, generate our icon for our app when we store it, uh, when we publish it on the Play Store. Now let's just move to the values directory. And here we have different files as well. Let's first open the first one. Here we have the colors.xml. Here we save our colors um, and this colors were, these colors were generated by Android Studio. So whenever we want to add or store more colors, this is our desired place. And the way to just create a color is by opening this color tag right here, then give it a name and finally the value. We'll discuss more about this in the future. Let's just now move to the strings.xml file. Here it's just similar to the color. We open the string tag, then the name of the uh, string and the value of the string. So this is probably one of the best places that you're going to store your strings in because whenever you store a string here, Android Studio will, will have a tool that will help you to translate your string to other languages. So for instance, whenever, for example, you have this app name here and you want to translate it to other languages, then we open this tool within Android Studio. So there's some tool, I'm gonna show it later in future videos, uh, within Android Studio that lets you translate this um, language or this piece of string to other languages corresponding with the language of the device. And whenever the device languages changes, the language within the app or the string within the app will change its translation accordingly. So this is a great place to save your strings. Now, finally, we have the theme, a theme directory. It has two files. The first one is the theme for the light mode. And the last one is the theme for the uh, dark mode. You can also see that we have used this theme file in our manifest. We have referenced the theme file in our manifest saying that the app should use this theme that we have created or that Android Studio has um, generated. And here we can add uh, our colors, for example, the how things should look, look like, how the widgets should appear, and so on and so forth. Now, let's just move to the XML directory. And here we can store anything that is not related of any category of our previous directories. So when I say category, I don't mean just drawables, layout, and XML. No, we have other categories. If you try to create a new uh, Android resource file, you can view all the types of the categories. So for example, we have drawable, icon, layout, we have menu, we have uh, navigation, transition, values, and XML. So these are all uh, the uh, categories. So whenever you have something that doesn't fit within any category, you can put it in your XML file. Finally, let's move to the Gradle or the Gradle directory. Well, actually, Gradle is not a directory. Yeah, it's not a directory. It's just a build tool within Android Studio that builds and combines all the resources of your app to finally generate that executable or the APK file of your app. And uh, here we have uh, two files. The first one is build.gradle project file, which is a global file. And secondly, we have build a Gradle module file um, related to the app itself. So let's just first see how these files are structured in order to get a full idea of these files. So here we have uh, plugins to help build our app. We have the Android application plugin, and then we have the Android library plugin and Android Kotlin plugin with the version. Next, let's move to the build a Gradle module file. Here we have all the configurations about our app. We have the same plugins from the uh, Build.Gradle project. We have the compile SDK. 
we have uh, the uh, application ID as well as the minimum SDK that our application can compile to. Then we have the target SDK, the version of our application, and finally, we have the dependencies or the external libraries that our app uses. So for example, the time will come when we need to add uh, external libraries that we, we have to use within our app. Like for example, uh, for networking libraries like Retrofit or Google Maps library, to include maps within our app navigation and so on and so forth so whenever we have this case here is the place where we store our application or our application external libraries so that was it for today's video i hope you liked it i hope you liked the tour we took around under studio projects and i hope you don't feel very overwhelmed with this the more we practice the more we build applications uh, the more we get comfortable and familiar familiar with these files and directories and with the tools that android studio offers so thank you for watching take care and i hope to see you in the next video